Hello, in this video, I'm going to be talking about invasive solid papillary carcinoma. What is it? How do we treat it? What does it mean? Before I go on, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to our channel. We're always putting out new content, so there's always something new to watch. Many of our videos come from viewers just like you who put a comment or a question or request for a topic in our comments. So feel free to give us suggestions for things to cover. So invasive solid papillary carcinoma is a recently defined type of invasive breast cancer. In general, it's seen in people who are older. So it's about 1% of tumors in people who are 70 years and over. So pretty uncommon, and it's only because we're getting much more sophisticated techniques to look at the internal cellular architecture and characteristics of cancers that we're finding out there are actually specific, distinct subtypes of cancer. So this is not a new kind of cancer that's shown up on the scene, but rather a new classification for a pretty uncommon subtype of breast cancer. Under the microscope, there are both papillary features and solid areas. So when we talk about a pap uh, papillary feature, a papilla, it's usually something that comes out and looks like a little finger, if you will, so, or like a little taste bud. Those are uh, papules, and papillary features tend to mean that they're, they're long and stringy. So in the tumors that are invasive solid papillary carcinomas, we see solid areas as well as areas filled with these papules that might look like you know, a cluster of little fingers together. We can only diagnose this under the microscope. It tends to be diagnosed in the same way that other breast cancers are diagnosed, whether it's a palpable mass or an abnormality on um, screening mammogram, so they don't show up any differently. And it, because they are treated the same way with surgery, removal of the tumor, it's only at that point that we can tell what they are. They don't look different on mammogram, they don't look different on MRI, and they certainly don't feel different when your doctor examines you. In fact, as you know, we can't tell in situ, non-invasive disease from invasive disease, just on the basis of either mammography, MRI, or a physical exam. So it's really the same as with other tumors. In general, these tumors are less likely to be associated with lymph node metastases, so they tend not to be as likely to travel and to leave the primary tumor and go to the lymph nodes. They also are HER2 negative in general. Check out our video on HER2. This is both a gene and a protein that we see in about 20% of tumors that are HER2 positive, though many more tumors are HER2 low where they're not as positive to make them called positive, but they're HER2 low. You can check out our video on HER2 low breast cancer as well. They also tend to be estrogen receptor and progesterone receptor positive, although they can be ER and PR negative. So tumors like any other breast cancer need to be tested for the HER2 protein and hormone receptors as well. In terms of treatment, these tumors are associated with a better prognosis that lymph, node being, lymph nodes being less likely to be involved can tip you off to that, as well as the fact that they're more likely to be estrogen and progesterone receptor positive. Those are all associated with a better prognosis. We tend to treat them with surgery, as I mentioned, either lumpectomy or mastectomy. They tend not to get very large before they're detected. So for people who want to keep the breast, breast conserving treatment with surgery and radiation therapy makes sense. We do look at the sentinel nodes with some exceptions based on somebody's age and other things we know about the tumor before going to surgery. Chemotherapy could be offered, though the fact that they tend to be caught earlier and be estrogen receptor positive makes them less likely to lead to an offer of chemotherapy. And endocrine therapy is pretty standard for any breast tumors that are estrogen and progesterone and or progesterone receptor positive. 
We're learning a lot more about this now that we have this particular subtype identified. There's also an in situ version of this, a non-invasive version of solid papillary carcinoma that's before the cells break through the basement membrane and spread into the normal surrounding tissue. And we treat this the same way we treat ductal carcinoma in situ. And we'll put a link to that video about ductal carcinoma in situ or DCIS below. Let us know if this was helpful. If you've had this type of cancer, we would love to hear from you. Share your experience with others in the Yerba community. You can drop a comment or question below as always. We get back to you within one to two weeks. Please be kind. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and thank you so much for watching.